I'm Shauna Lawhorn with the San Francisco League of Women Voters. I'm here to discuss Proposition E, a ballot measure which will be before the voters on Tuesday, June 5th. In 2017, the Board of Supervisors adopted an ordinance prohibiting the sale in San Francisco of flavored tobacco products, including menthol cigarettes and candy-flavored tobacco products. A referendum was filed requiring that the ordinance be submitted to the voters. The ordinance will not go into effect unless a majority of voters approve. Proposition E is a referendum to approve the ordinance passed by the Board of Supervisors prohibiting the sale of flavored tobacco products in San Francisco. A yes vote means if you vote yes, you want to prohibit the sale of flavored tobacco products in San Francisco. A no vote means if you vote no, you want to allow the sale of flavored tobacco products in San Francisco. I'm here with Dr. Lawrence Chung, past president of the San Francisco Marin Medical Society and a proponent of Proposition E. Welcome. Thank you. We're also joined by Star Child, outreach director of the Libertarian Party of San Francisco and an opponent of the measure. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you both for being here. I'd like to start with you, Star Child. Why do you feel as though this proposition is so important? Well, Sean, it's an expansion of the war on drugs, and we should know by now that drug prohibition has been a massive failure. Uh, it didn't work with alcohol, uh, it didn't work with cannabis, and it won't work, work with uh, tobacco. Uh, this will create a black market uh, in San Francisco for purchase of cigarettes on the streets where they won't be checking ID. It's already illegal for people under 21 in California to buy uh, tobacco products. So, you know, the opposition's uh, claims about, oh, it's about kids being able to buy tobacco. Well, kids can't buy tobacco now. This is about infringing on adult choices. And it's going to lead to more crime. It's going to lead to local retailers closing. The Controller's uh, Office of Economic Analysis estimated uh, 50 million a year in lost sales. Uh, stores that sell vaping products, uh, you know, and, and other stores that are highly reliant on tobacco sales will close. And in the case of vaping, it's particularly ironic because vaping actually helps people quit smoking. It's less harmful. Vaping and e-cigarettes are included under this proposed ban. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Dr. Chung, why do you think this proposition is so important? Thank you for asking me to be here. Uh, I'm here as a concerned physician, but also as a father. Uh, I have two wonderful nine-year-old uh, twin boys and girls, and I am worried that this uh, is an assault on our kids. Um, Candy flavored tobacco has only one use, and that's to hook kids into tobacco. Um, this measure is all about protecting our kids, our community, and I feel very strongly that we should uphold uh, this ban on candy flavored tobacco that has already been passed by a unanimous decision at the Board of Supervisor level. So please join me, in addition to other uh, public health organizations, including the San Francisco Marin Medical Society, the California Medical Association, and the American Medical Association uh, in upholding this ban on uh, candy flavored tobacco. Vote yes on Prop E. Thank you. I'd like to ask some questions, and I'm going to begin with you, Dr. Chung. Uh, do you believe that this proposition, a ban on flavored tobacco, is the best way to fight youth tobacco use? Yes, I believe this is a very effective way uh, to fight youth tobacco because we know that four out of five kids who start smoking start with a candy or flavored tobacco product. Four out of five. So if we ban the sale of these candy flavored tobaccos from our community stores, we will effectively keep them out of the reach of our kids. This is all about our kids' health. It's all about community health. Same question to you, Star Child. Do you think that this ban is the best way to fight youth tobacco use? Yeah, absolutely not. As I've already mentioned, the kids already can't buy uh, tobacco in, in stores. Um, what this will do is drive sales to the streets and online where uh, ID checks are less effective or in the case of street sales, not performed at all. Uh, it also puts people buying things at greater risk because when you buy stuff on the street uh, from unregulated sources, you don't necessarily know uh, what's in them. And uh, we all remember the case of, of Eric Garner uh, in New York City who was killed by the police there. Uh, he was selling illegal unlicensed cigarettes on the street. 
Uh, so that's an example of the kind of violence that, that can be produced by this. And it's not going to be effective at, at preventing kids from smoking. I mean, kids get tobacco now. I, I you know, it's a parental decision. You keep your nine-year-olds from smoking, um, absolutely. But uh, Prop E won't, won't help that happen. Thank you. Our next question, and it goes to you, Star Child first, is do you believe Proposition E is too broad? Um, there have been some arguments that it, in addition to it covering candy and flavored tobacco in that sense, that it also covers menthol cigarettes and potentially uh, shisha or hookah use in the Middle Eastern community is being targeted in that way. How do you feel about that? Well, of course it's too broad, but ultimately I, I would be against it. Uh, we would be against it even if it were only covering a very narrow segment. Because the, the ultimate question is, does, does your body belong to you or to the government? I mean, all of us consume various things that are unhealthy. I mean, if we all switched to a raw food vegan diet, I think we would all be much healthier. Uh, but does that mean everything that's not raw food and, and vegan should be criminalized? I don't think so. Uh, but that's the direction some people want to go. And, um, you know, big government, unfortunately, um, I mean, they already make more money off the sale of a pack of uh, cigarettes than the tobacco companies do. Now they're, they're trying to make money from both sides. They're trying to make money taxing it on one hand and fining people, you know, for illegal sales and, and, and you know, criminalizing it on the other and all the criminal justice apparatus that goes with uh, banning things. You know, there will be, of course, enforcement costs associated with that, as, as we've seen with the war on drugs and putting more people behind bars, especially from uh, low-income communities and communities of color. And I think this is absolutely the wrong way to go. We, we know prohibition and the war on drugs has been a failure. Uh, Dr. Chung, same question to you. How do you feel about the argument that this ban is too broad? Absolutely not. <clears throat> Again, as I mentioned, most kids start smoking uh, through uh, candy flavored tobacco products or other flavored tobacco products. These flavors are added for a reason, to make smoking easier and to addict more people. We know that the more you smoked, the more it'll cause you to have harm, cancer, and eventually death. Uh, I like to do whatever I can to keep my ki kids safe and to keep my community safe. Uh, I do believe that this ban will be effective in reducing our kids from uh, smoking. Um, so I'm a, a proponent of this proposition. And we'd like to have our closing arguments. Right. We'll start with, <laughs> yes. <laughs> we'll start okay. with you, Star Chef. Um, well, first of all, I want to point out for one thing, there's, there's you know, medical health professionals and people who care about uh, kids and reducing death on, on both sides of this argument. So um, please don't be uh, misled by the fact that my opponent has the word doctor in front of his name. He's a, a dermatologist, not a, a health researcher. Um, the, the, the flavored tobacco thing, the fact that kids, uh, you know, may start by smoking flavored tobacco, that really has nothing to do with reality that everybody likes flavor. I mean, adults like flavors. They're, they're acting like, oh, just because it's flavor, that means it's going after kids. Well, nonsense, you know? I mean, I, I like different flavored products when I, when I eat products. I don't smoke cigarettes, but it, it, it's something that um, pe people should have, again, ultimately the right to choose what to put into their own bodies. And uh, th this is not going to reduce smoking. History shows us it's not going to reduce smoking. The, the belief that it somehow will flies in the face of reality. Thank you. Dr. Chung? Thank you. Um, again, as a practicing physician in San Francisco for over 10 years and having represented San Francisco Marin Medical Society, the California Medical Association, and also the American Amer uh, Medical Association on Public Health Policy, I can tell you that all of our organizations feel that this proposition is the right thing to do. This proposition simply is to uphold the ban on candy flavored tobacco. Baked tobacco is waging, weighs, uh, waging a war, an assault on our kids' health. They try to get a new generation of children to be addicted to tobacco products that is gonna increase our healthcare costs down the road. Uh, not, not uh, in addition to, you know, diseases and death. So please vote yes on Proposition E. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you both for being here. Thank you. Thank you. No one probably. <laughs> we hope that this discussion has been informative. For more information about this and other ballot measures in the June election, please visit the Department of Elections website at sfelections.org. Remember, early voting is available at City Hall starting on May 7th from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. And if you don't vote early, be sure to vote on Tuesday, June 5th.